So it's all about staying positive through all of these things. Um, many emotions, like we said, that people experience and react with are very negative emotions. So we really encourage uh, trying to stay as pos positive as possible to um, cope with this and move forward on the journey. <coughs> the practical tips, again, by moving forward on the journey, take it one day at a time because that's all you can do. Just get one day down and over with, close your eyes, and wake up, and it's a new one again. So you just have to be thankful for that clean slate at the beginning of each day. And be with people you can laugh with, have friends and family around. Tell people if they um, hurt your feelings. This is for the person with dementia, because um, oftentimes uh, people may not understand or realize if they have offended you and it is good to express that so then that's not a repeated situation or anything and the people with dementia can still live productive lives they just may need to be um, modified or motivated to uh, get out and remain in these things so day to day keep it simple and follow a routine have the, uh, the week of activities laid out and uh, reduce the clutter in life by doing that. Give yourself lots of time for each activity that you plan to do in your day or your week, but make a list of the day's activities. So have it planned out so um, you can try and keep to this um, normal schedule and focus on what you can do within it. There's always um, lots of great sheets around here for new ideas on uh, things to do with your loved one. Uh, very creative things such as make a memory box and uh, scrapbooks and just different um, pastimes that you try and sit down and think of, but you never would be able to. We have them written down. There's like 101 things to do, 30 things in 30 seconds and stuff, and they're really great resources. The day-to-day -day continued here, the memory aids can be very useful. So using notes as reminders or the whiteboard, like I mentioned earlier. Use a large calendar as well in a visible location, whether you're making one with a whiteboard, Bristol board, whatever it may be. Large calendars can be beneficial. Keep your surroundings clean and organized as best you can and keep things used on a daily basis accessible and available. So um, that's a very uh, a good point there to keep it accessible and available. <coughs> and if uh, your individual, uh, the person with dementia is using these things on a regular basis, then it's good to have them out in plain view so they know that it's right there to grab and they don't have to be worrying about trying to find it or locate it. So the independence vow is a, uh, a really nice piece that I like to share and it's for um, the person um, with the disease or um, who's been diagnosed with dementia and it says I have an illness that causes memory loss and confusion. I like to be independent but I may need your help and understanding. You can help me by knowing unusual behaviors due to my illness, asking me what you can do to assist me and treating me with patience and dignity. So it is always vital to remember to treat this individual with <coughs> dignity and respect. And then the companion vow. So my companion has an illness which caused memory loss and confusion. Please understand any unusual behavior and treat my companion with passions and dignity. So these are um, both really nice vows here that um, individuals and their um, companion can use to express their, um, their feelings around the disease and uh, the memory loss and the confusion and, and how they want to be treated on this journey. So you really have to remember to live one day at a time and take it as it comes and realize that there are going to be those good ones and those not as good ones, but it is a, a one day at a time process and you can only try and do as much as you can in uh, 24 hours as possible and focus on what you are still able to do. So recognize what you're still doing and um, appreciate um, what your loved one is still able to do and accomplish in their day to day life and continue to participate in activities that are meaningful to you. Just because of the diagnosis doesn't mean that you need to give up something that you love. You may need to modify it, like we suggested, but it doesn't mean that it needs to end altogether. 
us in more coping strategies for our caregivers. It's incredibly important to make sure that you take time for yourself to avoid um, burnout and things like that. Um, identify a support system. So make sure you have an outlet, someone who you can vent your stresses and fears and all of these different things to, which you can um, use us as an outlet for that as well. We do do one-on-one -on -one, um, meetings here with individuals who are diagnosed with the disease and their uh, family members. Our executive director, Shirley Lucas, is um, an amazing resource for that. And you can simply just book those meetings with her by calling in. And it's to focus on the person's abilities and skills. So despite the loss of abilities, which can be um, very upsetting, it's still, um, the feelings and emotions still remain. And it will help the person maintain a sense of self if you focus on those abilities and skills and react to those positively and really encourage them to still participate in what they can. And it's important to encourage the person that they are attempting to express themselves. So try not to criticize or correct and stay positive and encouraging. And really show up that encouragement if you, if you think that this person is really trying and uh, you want them to succeed Support them and try and help them succeed. Use the laughter and humor to help you get through those difficult moments and learn about the disease and how it affects you and the person you're caring for. Because power is ultimately knowledge. Or knowledge is ultimately power. <laughs> Experiencing grief and loss. Grief is the primary emotion uh, when we, that we're faced with when we experience loss. And uh, grieving can start at uh, the point of diagnosis. And as the uh, diagnosis goes on and you learn to cope with it, then uh, you see some changes and maybe you're able to better battle the grief then. But grief can be experienced at all stages of the journey, like I said. And um, it's often um, the most difficult um, kinds of grief with Alzheimer's disease because you see um, a a decline in your loved one before there is um, the the loss that you experience from losing their memory and watching their memory from loss is a, a different form of grief than anyone else will experience and it's um it's good to um when we experience loss um this is sorry this is what i was trying to get into here when the person loses a specific ability you have watched this person knit. This is Nan, who's knit her whole life, and she knits me socks every Christmas. And now I, um, this is the first Christmas where I don't receive the knit socks from Nan because she no longer remembers how to knit and things like that. So that would be um, a situation that I would grieve at that point. And um, there is a change in the relationship with the um, individual. So there's a change in roles and things like that. And grief is a normal part of um, loss with no specific timeline. And if it's affecting your well-being, then it is ideal to talk to your doctor and express those emotions to them as well. So it took me a little bit to get that last example out there, it seems. But uh, the knitting seemed like a good good one for that, because I know I would definitely miss out on my nan's knitting. But thank you all for uh, listening to me there today, and uh, I hope that you were able to take a bit away on uh, communication and coping strategies. And I would love to um, open up the floor now. If you guys had any questions or concerns or anything like that that you would like to uh, address or talk about.